Hey guys, Dr. Brown here, and tonight we're looking at a unit circle and trying to answer a question that some students put to me about, well, how on a unit circle can you memorize all the various uh, trig cosine and sines all the way around? And I told them, well, this may sound silly, but I've never memorized it at all. I did memorize how to calculate any one of those. And that's the methodology I'm going to show you, which is what I had shown them that day on how to do this. But there are three things that you do need to know in order to do this. Okay, first, let me move my table here. Okay. All right, the first item is Oh, you, you will have to have an imagination. I know that looks like a potato, but it's really a circle. Okay. If I take this circle and I divide it into four quadrants, okay, this quadrant, and, and this is the origin, zero, zero, in the x direction, it's positive, and the y direction is positive. So I have a positive, positive in that quadrant. Next quadrant, you'll notice, is a negative x and a positive y. This quadrant, it's negative x, negative y. Negative, negative. And in this quadrant, I have a positive x and a negative y. Now, on a unit circle, Recall, on a unit circle, it has a radius of 1. So if I were to look at that angle with respect to the horizontal, and we said, hey, what is the sine and cosine? So I have a value of x, a value of y. Well, cosine, and we'll call this theta, cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have x over 1. Well, that's just x, right? So cosine alpha equals x. Sine of alpha is y over 1, the opposite over uh, hypotenuse, and that equals y. So sine alpha equals y. So if I'm trying to pick this point, it is cosine alpha sine alpha. That would be that point on a unit circle. And that's the methodology we're going to use to walk all the way around that circle. Now there's two triangles that you need to memorize. You should already know these, actually. You should know a 30 degree, let's see, that's a 90 degree corner, so you know the sum of the angles in a triangle is they sum up to be 180. So 30, 60, 90. Opposite of the 30 degree side, it's 1. On the opposite to 60 degree side, it's square root 3. And on the hypotenuse, it's 2. 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared equals 2 squared. Okay? Now then, there's another angle you need to memorize, and that's 45 degrees. So 45, 45, 90. And that's 1, 1, square root 2. So back to the 30 degree, if I had a sine of 30, that equals what? Opposite over hypotenuse. It equals one half. The cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Square root 3 over 2. All right. Sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over square root 2. Cosine 45 degrees is the adjacent 1 over square root 2. 
Now then, I know the math world would like me to change that and get that radical out and do that by multiplying it square root 2 over square root 2. Multiply it by 1. And that would give me square root of 2 over 2. Well, I can't personally look at that and tell what triangle I got that from. Where did it come from? So, for the sake of this exercise, we're going to leave it in this form because I know where the origin of that information came from. Okay? All right. So those are a few things you need to know. I'm going to leave these two up there. Now then, here comes a big potato. Not bad. <laughs> Okay, we'll let that be our origin. How's that? So now I have zero degrees, I have 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then back around 360 degrees. Now what do we know about a circle? We know there's two pi radians around the circumference of that circle. So 360 degrees represents 2 pi. Half of that would represent pi. So 180 degrees equals pi. Now, on the unit circle that was at the beginning of the video, or on the cover sheet, you'll notice there's only two triangles, or two angles that it's dealing with, 30 degrees and 45 degrees. Okay? If 180 equals pi, 180 divided by pi, or excuse me, 180 divided by 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 180 over 30 is the same as pi over 6. Okay, so I have this 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, 120 degrees, 150 degrees, now my 180, we could keep going. Okay, 180, 210, uh, 240, 270, 300, 330. Oh, I kind of got crazy there, didn't I? 210, 240, 270, 300, 330. And I'll leave the 270 outside here on that one. All right. 30 degrees is pi over 6. And all you're doing is dividing how many times does... 30 go into 180. Well, it goes in there six times. So that's pi over 6. Now, personally, when you're just trying to work with this, I keep going with pi over 6 because I, I have 30 degrees more. Well, that's 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, obviously that's pi, 6 over 6 is 1, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6, or 2 pi. Now, I realize you can reduce any of these. For example, 10 pi over 6. 2 will go into 10 5 times, 5 pi. 2 will go into 6 uh, 3 times. Sorry, big math got me there. 5 pi over 3. Now, if somebody came to me and said, 
What's cosine of 5 pi over 3? Or what is that point right there? Well, 5 pi over 3. 3 is a multiple of 6. In my mind, I'm changing this and saying, well, I'm going to multiply that by 2 over 2 and get that to 10 pi over 6. And then I'm going to say 1 pi, 2 pi, 3, or, or 1 times pi over 6, 2 times pi over 6, and work my way around until I end up at 10 pi over 6. And I'll know, ah, that is 30 degrees beyond 270. So I know it's 300 degrees because it's 1 pi over 6 more. It's 9 pi over 6 here, 10 pi over 6 there. Now, if I'm trying to figure out the coordinates for, you know, on your unit circle, they're going to have a x value and a y value here. They always reference when they're calculating this relative to the x-axis. Keep that in mind. One leg of your triangle has to be off the x-axis. Well, if I utilize this triangle, it's not. Well, that sum of those two angles gives me 90 degrees, so I know this one is 60. So now, cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, I'm in this quadrant here. It's a positive cosine, but a negative sine. So cosine of 60 is 1 half. And sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, but it's a negative. So it's negative square root 3 over 2. And that's the way you walk around and can calculate anything on that. For example, uh, 2 pi over 6. Obviously, that's pi over 3, right? Now, you'll see it is pi over 3. You'll see this one is pi over 2. It won't be 3 pi over 6. It'll be pi over 2. But again, okay, I need to change this to 6 in my mind. So I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 3. 3 pi over 6. Now I know it's multiples of 30. Because pi over 6 is 30 degrees. All right, so let's just do 60 degrees. What's the coordinates of that one, of pi over 3. What is that point right here? What is that? Well, it's, again, it's I'm referencing with the horizontal axis 60 degrees. What is the cosine of 60 degrees? It go back to this 1 half. And again, I'm in the, po the upper right, the first quadrant. So it's a positive x, positive y. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Sine of 60 square root 3 over 2. Let's just pick one over here. So let's pick 120. Okay, now again, I've got to reference my, uh, my angle off of the x-axis. I'm going up 30, 60. You know, it's only 30 degrees beyond, but it's a similar situation as that one. So now... I'm in this quadrant, so it's a negative cosine, positive sine, negative x, positive y. So 60 again. So what is the cosine of 60? <laughs> I need to get on a different number, don't I? Cosine of 60 is 1 half, but it's negative 1 half. And then a positive square root 3 over 2. You can walk around all of this. Let's just do this one, 210. Now you'll notice that's 30 degrees beyond. And I'm referencing one leg of my triangle off of the x-axis. Okay, so 30 degrees, 210. I can look at 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees. 
is square root 3 over 2, but I'm in the third quadrant. It's negative, negative. And so that was 30. Cosine of 30 is square root 3 over 2. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. But again, it's in the third quadrant. Both of them are negative. Negative 1 half. What about 45 degrees? So here we are with a 45 here. 45, 90, uh, 135. So again, 180, 180 equals pi. 180, 45, 90, 135, 180. So it goes into there four times. So 180 over 45 is pi over 4. So I have a pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. Again, you can go walk yourself all the way around and keep doing the same thing. Let's just look at 135, for example. 135. Ooh. So I have this situation. I have, again, I have to reference off the x-axis. I have this angle. Even though it's 135, it's all the way around here. But that gives me 45. I can look off the x-axis. This is 45 degrees here. And I can say I have a negative x, positive y. I'll put that out here. So cosine of 45 is 1 over square root 2, but it's negative 1 over square root 2, and a positive sine, which is 1 over square root 2. And again, this is, this is how, by knowing this and these two angles, and then remembering to re always reference one leg of that triangle you're trying to deal with off of the x-axis, you can calculate any, any point around that. You don't have to memorize this. Understand these three things and reference it off of the x-axis. That's all you have to do to qualify quantify any, of the, any point along that relative to the, to the 30 degrees or the 45 degrees that goes into that unit circle uh, data. All right, why are we doing this? Hey, together we're trying to build a better tomorrow and do that through math. Keep studying, guys, and uh, work with this and get the other points. If you run into a snag, just uh, message me and we'll help you and get you back on track. All right, that's all for now, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.